first came to Beaver Country Day School, I was 11 years old. I had never had a laptop, and I wanted to be a pop star. <laughs> Coming to Beaver from my local public school was a huge transition. For starters, Beaver operates mostly on computers, which means not only did I have to get one, but I had to learn how to use it. There were a lot of things I struggled with at first, like managing accounts, the Google Suite, and even things as simple as remembering passwords. There were a lot of times where I couldn't help but feel behind a lot of my classmates because they knew how to use these tools in ways that I just didn't. It was in the way that they could edit things on iMovie or the way they even knew about Photoshop and even the way they were able to change the themes on their web browsers. By the end of my sixth grade year, I've caught up. I committed my passwords to memory, I'd mastered the Google Suite, and I'd watched more iMovie tutorials than I could honestly keep count of. <laughs> Little did I know, this was just the beginning. As technology became more ingrained in my education, I started to think more about how it works. How do websites operate? How does my computer know what to do when I'm typing? And how do we talk to computers? The answer to that question was through coding. The way it was explained to me was as a language for computers. In my eighth grade history class, we were tasked with finding an innovative way to study. I decided I wanted to code something, an interactive study guide on an app called Pencil Code. Now that I look back, it's the easiest code I've ever written, but as we know, hindsight is 2020. The point is that in the span of three years, I went from not being able to use my Google Calendar to being able to write code, and in the span of that time, I've learned a lot about myself, mainly that I am not a test taker, but I am an engineer. Coming to a school like Beaver, where engineering and STEM is so at the forefront, I've been able to watch as students explore STEM and engineering through mindsets that are both creative as well as academic. I've seen students turn math equations into artwork and lines of code into Snapchat filters. For me, learning how to code has taught me so much more than I would have guessed. I've learned how to be patient and pay attention to detail. I've learned to think about things logically versus exponentially, and I've learned how to take someone else's idea and remix it to be my own. When I first started engineering, I was really worried about making a mistake, and I was terrified to ask questions, so much so that I'd rather stay quiet. And for those of you who know me, you know that's not my normal style. I was never shy. The problem was I didn't feel like there was space for me. I didn't know how to be an engineer. I didn't know how to use a 3D printer or a laser cutter, and I couldn't even name a real coding language. And I'd gotten this idea stuck in my head that just everybody knew how to do that. And growing up, I had such a warped perception of who engineers were. I thought you had to look a certain way and be introduced to it a certain way. And most importantly, I thought you had to know everything to call yourself an engineer. Coming to a space where science and engineering are valued at every level has taught me that A, engineers come from all backgrounds and with all abilities, and B, that everybody starts somewhere. And for me, starting was the hardest part. To combat this, I suggest starting early. I was 11 when I came to Beaver and I was introduced to science and engineering. And even though I didn't get more involved until I was older, I was still really, really young when I was introduced. We should be teaching kids how to handle technology in the same way we're teaching them how to handle things like grammar and math. And that's by starting small and starting young. That way, by the time these kids are in high school, they're fearless. They're confident in their abilities in ways that I wish I were. And most importantly, they save a lot of time about worrying about space because the space was always there for them. For me, and for a lot of students, it's the things that we don't know that are really scary. I think that, for me, learning how to be an engineer was so life-changing. And this opportunity needs to be present in the livelihoods of all children, but especially girls, and even more so, girls of color. According to the National Science Foundation, 
4.8% of the science and engineering workforce are African Americans. And engineering alone, it's 3.8%. In 2016, engineering degrees were earned by 2.9% of African American women. That's unacceptable. I've had people comment to me back at these statistics that maybe it's just that girls and people of color aren't interested in STEM. I propose the problem is a lack of access. How can we expect students to know that they want to code if they don't have access to a computer? How can you expect a student to become an engineer when they've never had the resources nor the space to practice? I've been able to take engineering and tailor it to myself. I've taken fashion and combined it with engineering through putting my Charlie card into a ring. I was able to join my school's robotics team and compete in a robotics competition in California called RoboSub. I was also the only girl that competed that year and the only African-American. One of the only African-Americans in the entire competition. That was a feat to see. I find that through engineering and through science and STEM, there's so much that can be expressed that oftentimes gets lost in translation when students don't have access to these resources. Science and engineering can be life-changing, but we need to fix the system so that students have op the option to do so. My name's Dilsey, and I'm an engineer. <laughs>